Alrighty, alrighty! I had to redo that. Welcome back from the intermission, you know. You gotta fix your mistakes, and then you gotta learn from them. But, like I said, if you did support your profile's clothing, hopefully everybody that sees it will get the full audio, including the mistakes, because, you know, you, you learn from your mistakes. <laughs> Thank you for supporting your profile's clothing on Pimper Dive. Shout out to yeah, Trey, yes, season sir. two guest. Yes, sir. But, back to the LA Super Bowl. How was it for you? So, the LA Super Bowl is, or was, the Super Bowl for non-football fans. So if you knew nothing about, you know, Super Bowl you used to get for non-football fans yeah. anyway. But if you know nothing about football, if you've never seen a football game, you didn't care, you've never seen a Super Bowl, that was the Super Bowl for not, it was packed out with like 100,000 people plus. Mm -hmm. The city was filled with so many, oh my gosh. I'm scared to hold on to that. But the, it was like the craziest thing, but for the culture, it was like, it was good to see. Like, it was good, like, it was in Inglewood. Mm. It was the first time we had our, our team and they, their home team. The second time it's happened in history. Mm -hmm. And we won. But it was just like, and it was a good game, too. That's hard to do. That's, That's hard to do, especially with a good Super Bowl with no Tom Brady in it. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, it was like, honestly, I was happy for the city. I think the city won mm -hmm. on that end. It was yeah. like, you know, but... Oh, it was crazy. It was heck. It was wild out there. I can believe it. It was like so many celebrities. I don't even know why so many celebrities exist. <laughs> but if you if they did exist, they was at the game. Of course. Had a couple homeboys at the game too. But I was just like, yeah, six thousand dollars. They got it. <laughs> six thousand dollars. I can buy a whole studio. You what you mean? mean? I hear. Everybody be pocket watching, so I won't say no names, but oh, they know who they are, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, no, it was crazy. Now, my conspiracy theory was it was the middle of February. Mm -hmm. It was the old mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it got hot. Right around the Super Bowl. Like hot, like a hot. Like, like Houston so, hot. Yeah, like hot. Oh, hell no. It was 80 degrees every single day of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Well, every single day of that week. Oh, wow. And then it got right back cold. Now, mm -hmm. I had to debate with my grandma. My grandma, if she's older, she doesn't believe in anything. Mm -hmm. So for her, I, I'm like, they can control the weather. They literally can do that. They shoot it up and stuff. Like, I don't know if y'all seen it, but like, y'all can look it up. It's like China admitted mm -hmm. during the Beijing Olympics. That was yeah. 2008. That's, yeah. that's over 10 years ago. Yeah. So if they could do it back then for that. And they just had the Olympics again. And they said they covered the whole yeah, thing with fake snow. Yeah. Like, this is all for the show. Okay. But it was the first time in life that I, like, saw something that I was like, this ain't right. This is the middle of February. It's 80 degrees. I mean, it is L.A., but, yeah. you know, so no one's going to question it. Okay. But it was, like, not a cloud in the sky. It was, like, it was odd. And then all of a sudden, it was, like, a rain and cold. Yeah, it was, like, you know when you fuck up with the weather? Yes. So, like, how would you expect it to, like, react? It's like, that's literally how it was, like, I don't know, man. All I'm going to say is, because, you know, I we don't we don't want nobody looking out the window yeah, 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 we don't yeah. want this to happen on yeah. the cameras yeah yeah actually, cool. I, I said that too definitively let me let me take that back a little bit let me yeah. walk that back a little bit let we want it. So, <laughs> yeah no i believe that that is a case but we could just say global warming and call it a day exactly <laughs> just call it global warming and call it a day because we did have another freeze here that same around that same time so I can only imagine if it's hot out there and it's cold over here. Like think about it, it's still we still getting a little cold in April in Houston, and, ain't, and I've been here most of my life, and it's never been like that. Like so, I'm. We had another freeze, but it was a smaller freeze in comparison to the big one last, on that year, last year. That was bad. That was terrible. But other than that, how was the like? You said something about the culture, but I know LA is known for. Love and everything, and I know y'all have some big sneaker stores out there. Size of LA, that is ask that. Oh my God, it's two sides of LA. Okay, I've been saying this for like two years now because, like, I think that a lot of people outside of LA don't understand, and then there's a lot of people in LA that like get it, but like they don't necessarily leave LA. Mm. So it's real LA, mm. and it's fake LA. Okay, so that's how I call it. I mean, I coined it first. True, the yeah, prerogative. You know what I mean? Let me trademark. I can't trademark that. LeBron is with the, That's how we got Taco Tuesday. Oh. LeBron, when he did the little so trademark. Y'all like, beat him out to it? No, nah, we didn't beat him out to the trademark. Oh. But we tried to. Though. Okay. Well, I was about like, to say, like, I was like, we don't get clout off of this. I'd love to get sued by LeBron. Yeah. Hey. At least you got his paperwork signed. You know what I mean? That's an autograph. That's, 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 like that's better than a shoe. That's an autograph. You don't even know it. Exactly. But. Uh, and shout out to Bron. Yeah, shout out to Bron. But 
no, the the culture of LA is like like even like going back to that door experience, right? Mm -hmm. I was on there, only black person, obviously. And they were like, uh, I told them I went to school in Texas Southern, and they were like, oh, so you're from Texas? I'm like, no, 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 I'm from LA. They're like, wow, I've never met anybody from LA. I'm like, how long you been in LA? Five, five years. Mm -hmm. I'm like, interesting. Mm -hmm. So on the fake side of LA, that's the tourist side. That's mm -hmm. the side everyone thinks of. Oh, you going Hollywood? You going all? That's Hollywood, North LA, you know, uh, Burbank, uh, uh, downtown LA, no. places like that where people aren't necessarily from. Gotcha. They aren't born there. You would never hear somebody say they're from Hollywood, they're from North. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all transplants. That's mm. people coming from other places, celebrities, mm. Instagrammers, Vineers, all of that, right? It's sort of not to cut you off, but it's sort of like how Houston is. Like, I know two celebrities personally that are from those cities. Like they. I can say one of them lives across the street from me, mm -hmm. and his dad used to play for the St. Louis Rams, and another one I went to high school with. They have to, some of them, sometimes they have to play in Houston because it's the bigger mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. But I know where you're from. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it's it's a different. Like you you know, okay, I'm from Mo City. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's you know what I mean. But someone outside of it, like let's say they leave and go out of Texas, and they're like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Mo City. Where is that? It's like Houston. Yeah, that's you, Houston. You, you, have to, I mean? you have to declare it. I get where you're coming from. So that's where like the, the little distinction comes. But a lot of people don't know culturally, LA is really small. Mm -hmm. Like it's big, obviously a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But the real side of LA, like we all know each other. Like that's like you be like oh it's good bro you meet somebody new right and you be like oh are you went to that school oh, my cousin went here oh, yeah. oh that's your best friend oh that's crazy oh, my cousin you know what I mean mm -hmm. we all know each other so it's like on the real side of LA it's like you know what I mean South Central Watts Compton mm -hmm. you know what I mean I'm, I'm neighborhood but like outside of that you know what I mean just like LA like South Bay Inglewood like Culver City like everything I always say the line starts at about Beverly Hills. Okay. And the sad part is, all those people came for the Super Bowl, uh -huh. they all stayed on the north side. They all stayed in fake LA. I mean, they might have went to the west side or something oh, like that, on. but they stayed in the fake side of LA. They never touched south of the, um, what's it called? South of the airport. Okay. The airport is designed for people to go north. Yeah, because that's big. Yeah, y'all airport track is hell. Oh, it's, it's terrible. I fucked that. It took me 30, <laughs> it took me almost an hour to get the in and out. We was trying to go to Roscoe. <laughs> what you mean? Like, fuck that. Yeah, but that's how it's designed, though. Mm -hmm. It's designed for the travel, and that's why they're building a little extra people who were Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I see what you're talking about. So it's like, it's also connected, but it's not, most people, have never ever been to real LA in their mm -hmm. whole life. And that's, I mean, I'll give a shout out right now. Issa Rae had mm -hmm. shined a lot more light on the real side of LA, made a lot more people go and start touring, like people on tours, mm -hmm. not tourists, but you know what I mean, like tourists. Like they did the Doom, like a lot of people do the Doom. The I never, real LA. Yeah, because I never actually fully watched, I only see the spots, and I'm like, okay. Now I'm gonna hate a little bit. The Doom's the most cinematic spot over here. Like it's way better part. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not from California, so I can't speak on that. Nor have I fully watched the show to its entirety, so I cannot speak on that. But from a real Californian, and my executive producer is also from California, they know what's best. I shut my mouth. I'm just saying. I'm just. And it's a list of crap. It's traffic. It's just. I wouldn't pick that spot. I like a couple other parts. They look exactly alike. Like Got I like one. other. Like, I mean, it's doing this iconic now. It's, you know what I mean? It is what so, it is. Exactly. But, um, pretty much, no, that's the biggest thing. Like, LA is like, I, I feel like there's some people I always tell them, like, you been to LA? Have you been to LA or you been to LA? Mm. You know what I mean? I get what you're saying. That's why you asked me that earlier. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, you gotta come to LA. The real LA. The real LA. Get real food. Oh, you know course. what I mean? Come, come kick it. It's, yeah, it's a little dangerous politics. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. do what you normally would do. Don't act that. See, that's the problem. People think everyone in LA is extra. No, I'm extra. Cause I travel a lot, so I'm extra. That's fair. You know what I mean? I'm the most extra person in LA. I'm the most extra person asking me by LA. I'm the most extra person in my friends. Like I'm the most extra, and I'm not that extra. Like I'm at well, I'm pretty extra. You're extra. My my demeanor is like calm, so yeah. it's like you know. But I'm pretty extra. But in LA, oh, you be like, yeah, you acting the ass. You, why are you like? I'm just it's compared. It's compared to that. You know what I mean? It's environmental. Of course. But I think that. LA people have this like different demeanor and mindset that comes from like our grandparents. Like, my grandma came from Louisiana. Like a lot of them like came from Louisiana, North California, same way. Like they came from like Michigan and stuff. A lot of them. So you see similarities in like Detroit culture and Bay Area culture. You see a lot of similarities in LA culture and Louisiana. Like it's, it's I see it. You know what I mean? And so it's like that's ingrained in us, but it's like different because it's on the West, so it's a different mindset, of course. It's a lot more expansive and like have this different mindset but 
I think that a lot of people will benefit from actually taking the time and going to real LA. Of course. Well, see, it's, it's some beautiful places in real LA. I think the best beach in well, well, you guys, right? Let me not say that because I'm like, send people to my beach. But you don't, yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, want to send people to your personal yeah, spot. Yeah, 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 I get yeah. that. I respect but that. Palace Birdies, if you guys ever seen, uh, what's the movie on Disney Channel? Uh, double double Team? Yeah. I think, I, I think so. They that play basketball mm -hmm. and they was in Palace Birdies. Oh wow. Yeah, that's literally on their on their jersey. It's on the poster and stuff. And that's Palace Great. Most people have never been there. Wow. It's beautiful. Oh, like wow. it's it's south side, you know what I mean? But people don't go there because you gotta go down central. You gotta go down Cleveland. You gotta go you know what I mean? You gotta go out the way to see it. And people don't go down South Central. People think South Central is South Central in the center of like the south of LA. No. no. South Central is South Central because it's south of Central Avenue. <laughs> like people don't know. You learn something new every day with people this think show. Prince Charles is a is a city and it's because like a lot of people in like LA from the like developer standpoint, the ginger car standpoint, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? They they literally are trying to like, standpoint. yeah, they're building a train that basically takes you straight through Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. Like you go from the airport, you get that's why like, all it also all like connected. Mm -hmm. The Uber, the, the train, the yeah. Inglewood, and the train should be able to take you from anywhere around like the whole city. Yeah, like once it's done, it'll be just gonna be live. So it's like Kyle Houston did the Metro train game. Exactly, but here's the only difference. There's no stops in the hood. It drives right from the hood. Oh, you shit. close your eyes, put your AirPods in, you know what I mean? You put like a little mask on. Mm -hmm. Wake up when you out there. Oh, wow. So it's like, that's why they're trying to make Crenshaw. Unfortunately, like people like Nipsey, you know what I mean? RIP. RIP. Once like he was still here, even after he was like gone, like his legacy just like made Crenshaw like be on the map and just like the West Side where I'm from, you know what I mean, okay. Slauson and stuff. And so like for him specifically, he's kind of like derailed that even in like post mortem. Mm. But like they trying to make Crenshaw the Crenshaw district. Crenshaw's a street. Oh wow. Like yes, yeah, it's, it's a street. street. Yeah. We just it's just the West Side, you know what I mean? Like we don't look at it like that. So like. Our map of LA and the, like LA, and I seen the article once, so you can look it up. It's called like how Nipsey viewed LA, but like how like he viewed it. That's why people always like, why didn't he leave the hood? He should have left the hood. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How he viewed it wasn't like it's the hood. It's like this is our community. This is like our state in like everything. This is our roots. Yeah. Like like my grandma moved over here, and now I grew up over here, and you know what I mean. So I look at it differently. Not saying that it needs to necessarily like gentrified or anything like that. I understand the benefits of gentrification from a structural standpoint, but I think it's on us specifically to start reverse gentrifying our own neighborhood, right. taking back our own community. Right. You know what I mean? Because the white people, here's the thing that keeps the white people up. They get in, they get something, and they like build on like the property and they say it's beautifying it is doing you know what I mean? and it costs more to live there. Exactly. If we just took like more of that effort and energy on ourselves. I'm not saying like we need to do something more. You know, I hate mm -hmm. people that oh no we need to reset ourselves back. I ain't doing all that. I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. Mm -hmm. But we need to specifically start like looking at like a more communal approach to like how we go about our own community. Because it's a community at the end of the day. You can't do anything if it's not collective. True. Like I shouldn't be able to say I want to do this in my house and if not as opposed to building up my house like this, I'm gonna make sure like I'm gonna get some more property down the street mm -hmm. so now I can get more people in. You know what I mean? But I mean, that's just how Nipsey looked at it. And I guess that's why a lot of people move to California here. Cause it's easier to get more property here. And it's, it's, already, it's already black. You got more money in your savings. Mm -hmm. You got more options, more money, more options. True. And you move out here and they're doing that same approach. They're reverse gentrifying out here. It's just that this is y'all community. It's not our community. So it's a little, it's a little controversial. No, yeah, I get it, especially when you got a lot of people that don't know how to drive out here. Well, we, like we was talking earlier, yeah, 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 before the show, like everybody moving out here, but not knowing how to like adapt to Houston culture as it is, and they take you have to take it one day at a time. That's what I'm saying because here's the thing with with the culture. Most people don't know LA was really like built by like New Yorkers. Mm, New yeah. Yorkers came out there. My my mentor Bond, uh, RG again. Mm -hmm. um, he used to always say like. New Yorkers come to LA and they just take over instantly because their mindset is like once it's like like New York that winter, we got winter LA. So like it gets cold in the winter and you know if you outside like you know what I mean you don't got heat, you can't afford all that, you could die. Mm -hmm. So for them they got that hustler mentality, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. They move out to LA with that hustler mentality. Unfortunately, a lot of us in LA good weather we don't have to have that mentality like that mm -hmm. like we on top of we move fast mm -hmm. we're accustomed to it but we just can chill a little bit and be like, I get to it. you know what i mean i got a lot of boys like hey yo you got that job I'm gonna get to 
I know my grandma. Too. And you do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. So it's like they were able to get into LA and kind of like take over a lot faster because of that mentality. And, you know what I mean? The approach was wide open. I'm seeing now a lot of LA people taking that same mindset. Mm-hmm. And that shit is taking the culture. Yeah. yeah. Cause we take our culture with us. Yeah. Same I way New York take their culture. You y'all see the bro. Now you see the metros. Now you see it. Hey, bro. Austin and Houston, man. Hey. Austin, honestly, I feel like more California people move to Houston, but more Houston people end up moving to Austin. More black people. There you go. Moving that to Houston. Mm-hmm. Black Californians. Yeah. More white Californians going straight to Austin. And that, and that's why most of the metropolitan areas not counting for work in the last big election end up being a lot of blue. But you know what? When I think about like both sides of LA, mm-hmm. real LA, we'll prefer Houston. Of course. Make LA, you won't prefer Austin. It's a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I understand you, and that's just the way the world works. You know what I mean? I'm an old man, I'm from the 90s, man. Hey. <laughs> I'm from a century ago, I'm from the 1900s, man. Hey, <laughs> uh, these newer kids don't know. Hey. But before we go into our last part of the show, I, like I was before, I, before we got into our deep tangent, because it was a good tangent. I'm not gonna cut you off. You know, you're giving me content, and I appreciate. Hey man, it. Hey man you know what I mean. You know I, I appreciate. You know what I mean, you I, me up. I, I appreciate. need a moderator. <laughs> my second producer is busy, but I understand. But I appreciate a lot of things that California people, California people brought here, and we take things back there as well. And it works both ways. But when I'm going, I'm going to the sneaker side of things now. I know y'all have a big sneaker market out there, and I know it's chaotic. Not as bad as Houston, but I know a few shops that y'all have exclusives and everything. How bad does it really get? Or how good does it get? Depending on your perspective. Because yeah. everybody's about the fashion. Since the pandemic started, before the pandemic? Mm-hmm. Oh, you get any shoe you want any time. Oh, shoot. Bro, you can say that. Oh, you get any shoe you want. Bro. It's too many stores. Too many stores. I know. If, you, if you're willing to pay the aftermarket. Oh, God, no. I, I get, okay, I see where you're coming yeah, from Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I see where you're coming from. Okay. If you really pay the aftermarket price, you need to go And now, since the pandemic, because of the supply chain, mm-hmm. aftermarket looks ridiculous. The market's been rolling, and I, and I take this to a deeper context, but I had a trivia question about this, that social status, shout out to social status. But, like, the mar- I tell people that the hype piece rolled the market before the market was even out there. And I take it back to my senior year of high school in 08 09, and shoes were, like, Jordan 1's was cheap, now they almost two. So, and then the times of waiting for shoes to change, more people are buying, getting bots for shoes. So, that's a very open idea. Like, the aftermarket is even worse. The aftermarket is way worse now than what it used to be. Because now, because places like Fight Club mm-hmm. no longer have that, like, distinct, uh, like, customer base. Yeah. It's, it's wide open and everything's online. Yep. And the problem with online, buying shoes online, you can't trust them. You can't trust them. You don't know what you get. They make good fakes now too. Boy, don't even get me started on the fake market. So it's like, but that's LA though. And because we are so like, I won't say like riddled by the pandemic, but we're just now starting to get out the pandemic. Nah, yeah, I know. We're just now starting. I mean, we opened up, but like stuff like that, that's like niche or like, I mean, it's big the market, but it's still niche technically. Yeah. Like the sneaker market, like the real, real sneaker market, yeah. not the, you know what I mean? Like not, the IV stick, not, the legs watches. Yes. Yeah. I'm down this and I'm doing, I'm going crazy. Not, <laughs> well, it's not a, just the complex, you mean the hype beast in a sense. Mainly all the complex watch, no disrespect to complex, of course. But it's suburban white kids that, you know, that they, ruin the market. They listen to Travis Scott and they buy these. It's just, you know, it's just, it's that's just, what I'm saying. I know, I know Travis Scott. They, they, they ballooned up the market. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? So it makes it difficult because now in LA, the market is just that much more packed with more of them. Mm-hmm. And because they have whatever going on with their computer skills. Yeah, yeah. the system skills and the boxes stuff. Yeah, yeah, Kim Possible way they weighed on the computer with it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like they have some extra plugs to getting that off the market and flip. And making triple what it was originally worth. So it makes it harder if you really, really appreciate just good shoes or sneakers or something yeah. like that to get your like actual shoes easily. You gotta go way out your way. So now I think a lot of sneakerheads are going from like back in their room back, like you said, oh nine. I used to know people like like Bow Wow Lotto tickets, yeah. like you know what I mean, just nothing but sneakers. Yeah. And now it's like they 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 start to, you know what I mean. I'm gonna get this one every three months. Exactly. That's how it's become, especially within the recent years. Especially last year on the Nike, that was my best year ever. 
in a long time. Mm -hmm. And even with this year, you know, with the pageants and the rebellionaires, that'll be on the next episode, of course, you'll see the rebellions. But it's like, it's easier for us to get it lower price on the aftermarket, but it's harder for us to get it on the actual app. Exactly. So, and I know the social culture out there is mad. And like I said, y'all just getting out through the pandemic and stuff. And even with that, I, you know, you appreciate going outside more now than you did in 19 because we was all inside. So, once you get inside, you, hey man, crazy story, it's a random story. Random story, we got time. I was in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Peaches too, you know what I mean? I was in Atlanta, Peaches, Peaches and Caviar, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Joe, you, you know Peaches? I heard the name before. Okay, okay. She's from the most. Oh, yeah, no, I remember Peaches. I remember Peaches. Yeah. No, I remember Peaches. So, Peaches, and, uh, I was at her engagement. Oh, her okay. engagement party. And so, um, I'm there. We go to like, after the, the party's over, we go to like the little club or whatever. I'm with my profile, Trevor, you know what I mean? A couple people, a couple of people. And it's a lot of Dallas people. Of course. And so they turned on uh, this song. I keep telling stories at some point. Uh, they turned on this song. Uh, uh, what's the song? By Mo Three. Yeah. Outside. They scared to come outside. outside. Did a copyright on it. Don't get it. Yeah, no, we don't. But <laughs> they turned on the song, and everybody went crazy. All the dads, they went crazy. That's my first time hearing it. This is like back in like October. Yeah. They, I'm like That's crazy. Like everybody's like they they like. You know what I mean? They get they get with it. Like they live, like jumping on stage, everything. So I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm like, what is this? Like, what is on? They're like, oh, it's outside the one. I'm like, oh, okay. They're like, yeah, it's the anthem. I was like, oh, okay. So literally, my my like whole energy with that song, I don't just gonna say inside. That's the only reason I thought about yeah. it. But my whole like energy just with that song was connected to that moment. I took that back to LA. I must have played that for about 15, 16, like straight days, like loud, laughing, extra, you know what I mean? You got to. And everybody was like, yo, what's that? And I must have hit that little meme that, you know what I mean? On the <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, not everybody listens to LA. I mean, that's lit. But that's how the culture goes. That's you know what I mean? Is. You take it, because I think usually we like LA, we have our own little distinct sound, but like, it'll be like someone coming back leaving and bringing it back to the trial. Speaking of sound, and I hope the camera doesn't die because this is actually a good point. My cousins from Frisco, used when I was younger, of course, used to bring like E-40 and stuff to to us. And we'd be like, oh, this shit is hyphy shit. Oh, that's what's <laughs> up. Like, we used, bruh. Oh, God. Oh, God. And then so my cousins signed up to my cousins in Frisco, of course. They brought the the E-40 wine out there and I had it. I was like, hey, yo, he was on the sum. And we didn't even know it. E40, low key E40 been on some shit. Oh, we God. And we was not prepared we for catching it. catching up. We catching up to the level that he's on, and we've just been so behind with it. But that's crazy that MO3 has made an influence from Dallas, technically Atlanta, too, because they played by out way there. of Atlanta. Way by way of Atlanta to California. And that's because I remember when we used to bring, like, slow down bang and stuff. My cousin used to bring that from here and there, and they'd be enjoying it. They'd be like, that's what's up. So I, and I see how both cultures collide with each other and they bring something back positive to each other. That's what I'm saying. So that's amazing. We gotta, that's what I'm, it, we gotta establish that though. Like that's the biggest thing is uh, I seen somebody say the other day that like they don't want to go by like African American anymore. They want to go by like Native Black American. Like they want to like start to build that like again that communal level of, like thinking. But with that comes culture. Of course. We gotta have the culture. We gotta spread the culture. I seen a lot of people actually snub the Grammy. Oh. It's like we need to do something on our own. No, dead ass. And I guess speaking of the Grammys, then I hope, like I said, I really pray the camera don't come off, cut off. But I saw something today about Virgil, about being a hip hop fashion designer, and that, and that, and I saw that this morning before we got on. And I didn't want to bring it up. I was gonna bring it up the next day for the next show, mm -hmm. and it hit me because I was like, Virgil did a lot more than just hip hop fashion. He did IKEA. He did, of course, the joint. He did designs for a few celebrities. He did Louis Vuitton. Yeah, Louis Vuitton. And I'm like, that's big time. Too. That's big time. And for y'all to just snuff him like that, that kind of was a low blow. And I agree, we should do something for ourselves. But when we try to do something for ourselves, not to, not to make a negative point of it, mm -hmm. but it's like, will we, appre will we appreciate it the same? And that's the issue I feel like people will have with us doing it for ourselves. We do BT where we do source. And every time we do it, we don't appreciate it when it's not as good as it used to be. 
and that's a whole nother debate for a whole nother yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> I, we are not getting to that. That would have to be. I'm like, I used to work for BTI. I'm not not slugging it, but I'm saying for the artists or the people themselves, will they appreciate? It was a disconnect with BT, you know. BT. We ain't we ain't going into it, but but pretty much I think we do need to sit down and create. And I know a couple people actually have talked to me about that, like creating their own show, creating their own workshop, stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? It just how you go about it, it has to have the legitimacy and the back of the people. People be thinking, oh, we need celebrities. We don't need the celebrities. <laughs> we need the people, we need everybody, like, people tuning into this. Like, yes. we need stuff like this. Like, like I said it before, like, when it comes to music, why music, like, fell off, I do why, why music, specifically, like, changed so much at 16, was that, like, people start taking the power out of the, the system. Yes. Like once they start listening on SoundCloud. Yes. And, you know what I mean? So I go directly to the artists. I don't have to worry about all these other like streams of like, you know what I mean? Barriers to entry. I can just go straight to the, the consumer, straight to the artists. And that's why I'm glad that there are more, before the pandemic, of course, there were way more festivals that promote other artists that aren't mainstream. And I was, and that's why when you said Austin, I was like, yeah, because South by Southwest, that's where you meet a lot of people that are trying to make their name for themselves. And they come from all over. Oh, God. And to make it, honestly, truthfully, I'll give you one of my best experiences. South by 16, my, I was out there in 16. See, I was out there. I, I, God bless you, my favorite artist, Doom, was performing. Ooh, Ooh. I'm a big Doom fan. I'm a diehard Doom fan. Like, I did, when I found out he died, I was in the liquor store because his wife told me not to change the story, of course. But I was in the liquor store buying cigars, and when I saw that he died since Halloween, because he ain't posted, it kind of made me like, bro, I can't do this. Not not, not, not not to start the year off like this. That's what I'm saying. So, but bringing it back is like, Lil B came and replaced Jay Electronica that year because Jay Electronica couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And I stayed for Lil B too, because I, I support Face God. Mm -hmm. But, like, the cultures itself, we do have to establish our own culture. I agree with that 100%. And we have to appreciate it as well. Oh yeah, that's the big thing. And I mean, it's on us as like content creators to create content that is up to the par of these traditionally white. That's that mean, exactly. But at the same time, it's on our consumers too. Like we have to connect outside of everything else. Exactly. And that's when it's gonna actually like take hold. That's what I've been saying about T. That's why I'm, I have all this stuff. So there's like that's the core of it. It's like. We need to create platforms specifically independent of everything else and other influences before we can ever talk about partnering with them and doing all this stuff. Exactly. We partner too fast. Exactly. We take the check too fast. Exactly. And I definitely agree. I don't want to hold you up because I know you got to get ready for your flight. I got two last questions. And they're going to be short ones. Like I said, I pray the camera don't die. <laughs> but your favorite shoes that you ever had. I know you don't have them because you flew out here for your Neos. Shout out to Beta Up. You know, this is the second Beta Up guy that we've had on the show. We, you know, the home team gonna look out for the home team. You know what I mean? But your favorite pair of shoes that you've ever had or ever bought, quick story, you know, not to hold you up. My favorite pair of shoes. Any pair. I would have to say it's torn because I was gonna say the Retro 3. The, the, you know the retro three, the black cement. Yes, I, I was literally there. Black Friday, first Jordan release that I actually like attended and like got the shoes. I was kids for like before that. Okay. My foot was like a size six or something. I'm in eighth grade, seventh Lucky. grade. Yeah, literally. Or no, I was in ninth grade. I was in ninth grade. Okay. This is 2011. And so literally, I just gave my whole age, my whole information. That's crazy. We'll bleep it out. You know what I mean? And so essentially, I remember going to the mall. I went to three malls with my mom. Mm -hmm. And living Black Friday, I'm up at like midnight, you know, the back in the midnight release and stuff. Of course. And so I went to the first one, got in line, waited for hours, got all the way up there. I'm like, yo, just give me, give me a five, six. I was like, all right, for sure. You sure you don't want to like measure? I'm like, man, I'm good. I, I know my size. Of course. You know what I mean? And, and my mom was like, you probably should. Why did I put my foot on there? And they was like, the size eight, five. I was like, you getting some competition size. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. That was like, so, if you're in size eight, they was like, once he hit that scratch, I was like, so I'm like, you know what I mean? And I had to go to two other stores and I got it. Up bitch, I went to Beverly Hills, you know what I mean? At the time, before the hype could take over. Of course. It was a good place to go. You go to a white neighborhood, you're gonna get the shoes. Of course. But uh, I would say that just because it was like, that was my first pair of like, yeah, sure. Jordans that I bought type mm -hmm. shit. So, you know what I mean? I have a connection to it. But outside of that, it was a pair of shoes, uh, some clear weathers. 
Yeah, oh, wow. you know I like wearing other shit too. Of course. And so I uh I ended up going, I got them on some dryer shit too, like at like Saks at Fifth or some shit. Yeah, yeah, oh. not, not bougie at all. Not bougie, you but know what I mean? you just you know you stop in there. I'm not a shopper. I'm gonna say, bro, I don't like doing all that. I Same. Do all the clothes and stuff. You know, you see I got my profile stuff. Hey, Facts. I get other people right. I don't know, but essentially. Uh, I put on like the like the moccasins. I don't know if you remember I had like the little moccasins. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And everybody was like, "Yo, where'd you get these from? Like, where'd you get these?" I was like, "What? I just bought these at the store. You know what I mean? I just thought they looked cool. I didn't of even." Course. And I was just wore them out. Either that or the Uggs. Okay. You remember the Uggs? Yeah. Everybody got them now. Everybody got them now. But you was kind of a trendsetter at that time because you came. Oh, got I took them. all the slack, bro. You, know? <laughs> you took all the slack. But in, in retrospect, everybody's getting them now. So, like, I was like, I because in LA, I seen like my homeboy, Ty Kenny, have them for my boy AJ, too. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, these lies. Like, everybody in LA was starting to wear them. And this is like 2015, 14. Of course. And so I, I bought me a pair real quick, and I go to Houston. They was like, what are those? Uggs. And then, you know, they're like the little sneakers. Yeah. Not like Uggs, but the like, yeah. Sneakers. And so everybody was like, what are, everybody, what are those? Like, why are you wearing those? Like, you know what I mean? I took all of the jokes, all of this. Like, but you came up and set a trend and niggas are now setting up for themselves. And now I used to everybody wear it. And exactly. literally, the, it was the craziest thing. Like a couple years later, like a couple people walked up to me. This happened a couple times too. And they was like, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I got me a pair of Uggs. They come to the hotel. <laughs> See? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> See? I'm like, Hey, but it happens that way sometimes. It does. I mean, like, you don't even, I think people be like, oh, I'm trying to be a trendsetter. You don't have to try. Just be yourself and get what you like. You know what I mean? Exactly. All the shoes I named, I like those shoes. I mean, the threes are everybody like, 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 but, but, like that. But you have a personal connection to the threes, not like most of these high boots. That's all I'm saying. So I understand completely. This is why, this is sort of why I created the show. Because any shoe that in my closet, I have a genuine story to them. Mm. And I'm a genuine sneakerhead, so it's kind of like I respect the. I don't respect the hype, I respect the art. Mm -hmm. And then, especially as an artist or anything like that, I pay attention to detail. Because the 2000 late, mid 2000, like around that time, 15 and stuff. Yeah. Sneakers had fell. I remember Jordan had this little remaster. Yeah. Because they would stop making the threes and stuff. Because they did. They re-released the Aqua Eight that year too, and I actually hated it because I had the Yo seven pair in the ninety two in the ninety three pair and. The material felt different, so I see where you're coming from. They was all bullshit. Yeah, no, I know the opposite were my favorite shoes, and they was like, it was because they they had high pieces was gonna buy it no matter what. So yeah. they could put out anything. They could put out this plastic bag with some shoe strings, and they was gonna buy it. And the special instrument that water for the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I was just thinking of. But not to hold you up, I know you gotta get ready for your flight. So you got any? We normally what we do is try to give encouraging words, you know, at the end of the show for anybody or you know check on people. Normally our trainers would like be like check on people. I'd be like, you know, lift up your friends, anything like. You got anything special you want to say before we sign up? I mean, I appreciate being here. You know what I mean? Shout out to the show. Shout out, of course, you Cordell. I gotta come back. You know what I mean? I gotta come back for my dog Cordell. You know what I mean? Exactly. But uh, we'll be back for a full full show. Appreciate the time. Appreciate no, you know what I mean. No problem. The snow. No you know problem. What I mean? it's gotta be right with the right side too. You know what I mean? I got it now. I'm not gonna do you wrong, especially on this show. Yeah, you know I mean, and especially since you know I support y'all in any way I can. You know, at least look out for y'all, and especially it's always good that HBCUs, especially members of HBCUs, are coming together to connect us on the conversation too. We will probably have to do a part <laughs> two on another day, but it's always great having you here. Appreciate and it. I appreciate it. So, this is your boy Landon Strange. Ryan Arbor. And you know, he's wearing his Pro Fight Trace Pimper Dot clothing. Mm -hmm. And we are going to sign out with a fancy year. Be easy, be safe, and enjoy your day. I'm take your peace. And for sure, take your peace. I had to learn that the hard way. And your peace is your peace. Yeah. Peace of love, God.